Welcome to this week's SV Links video. As you remember, last week we went over our phase one objectives and a recap of how we did on those. So here, this week, we're going to talk about our phase two objectives. Right, and before we get to that, we're going to go over the lot and show you what we did this week, but I do want to mention that this is also kind of a part two as well, since last week we were ferrying the hull and sanding the hull. And like many tasks when building a boat, there's sort of a repetitious portion of this, where in this case we have to fare the hull and sand the hull, fare the hull and sand the hull, fare the hull and sand the hull, up to five or six times. And so that doesn't get us on to new things, uh, unfortunately, for these videos, <laughs> but it is necessary for us to stay on schedule in the most efficient way. So we're not going to uh, spend a ton of time over on the lot this week, just a little bit showing you some of what we did in some of those layers of uh, fairing the hull. Uh, but by the end of the video, we're going to do what Marianne said, and we're going to tell you about our plans for phase two and how long we think each thing will take so that you know what's coming. All right, so let's get over to the lot. Yep. All right. A couple of our viewers asked how we fared with Hurricane Hillary, which is, of course, when at the time it reached us, Tropical Storm Hillary. And uh, we didn't have any damage whatsoever. All we did is cover, take the tarps down so they wouldn't blow away in the high wind, and just covered the hull and other things that are out, put most of it back inside the shipping container and such, and it's not even really muddy. Uh, so we're good to go. We'll get back to work today on Tuesday. So uh, Sunday and Monday were our big rainy days. So uh, this week we're going to work Thursday, so we won't actually lose a day due to the storm. And there you go. 45 minutes later, back to work. Sanding all day today. We've got maybe two thirds of that hole done the last day we sanded. And today we'll maybe get another two thirds and then one more day and we'll get the whole thing. So sanding all day today so I'm not going to be showing you a ton of new stuff today but that's okay we won't make you sit through all that sanding either so we'll just be skipping ahead see you there so what we discovered is on this third layer of fairing compound we're trying to get a very smooth surface here and so we have to spend some time using our torture board here to get it uh, completely smooth because when you're using the smaller electric sanders, they aren't necessarily going to uh, smooth out larger dips. So, uh, a little shoulder workout for both of us. We trade off and work it out. We still use the electric sanders as well, but um, this gives us a smoother surface in the end. All right, we finished sanding the third layer of fairing compound over the entire hull now. It took about two days, although uh, we split it into three, but really a couple days. And it's very nice. Quite happy with the smoothness of the whole thing. However, there are still a little, few tiny little spots here and there that uh, we're going to go and do just small little touch-ups to next. Uh, like here's a good one. And uh, let's put, this time we're not gonna spare the whole hull again. We're done with that. Um, we're just gonna do a little touch-ups in certain spots, and then we'll sand that the next day after that uh, cures up. And meanwhile, we've also gotten the first set of cradles, well, the first cradle of the first set done. And uh, I really haven't really showed you too much of that, but we have the second cradle that we'll do starting tomorrow, and I'll film some of that, so you show you what we're doing there. To hold this, boat because we're going to be flipping this uh, canoe over there not too long from now. However, I was hoping that we would flip it this coming Saturday, but I don't think so. Uh, we've got a lot of little things to do. This will be done, but we've got some other stuff to do. For example, I will move the camera to show you this. This piece here is part of the strips for the starboard canoe when we start building it. 
and it goes all the way down to the end of this 50 foot long set of cube plywood cubes here. We've got to cut this into strips and bring out the two really big panels that are left for this, put a biscuit in between them and, and cut all of those strips. And we want to do all that before we flip the hull. And the reason for that is these cubes. Uh, this morning, we, Brian and I were talking and we figured out that if we don't cut all these strips before we uh, start uh, working on the hull and such, then we're gonna have to move these cubes out of the way to flip the uh, canoe over there with a bobcat, then put them all back in again so that we can cut the strips, then take them all back out again so that we can bring the diesel engine and put it into the hull, and then put them all back in again so that we can build the bridge deck on top of this. Well, we don't wanna move them that many times. And the simple answer is, we're gonna cut all of these strips before we move the tables. That way, once we move these, all the strips are already done and we can flip the canoe over and we can bring in the engine and put it in all without putting these back in. And the only time we'll have to put them back in is just once to build the bridge deck. So that's what we figured out this morning. It's just a logistics thing with uh, moving these. and We just don't wanna move them that many times. So that's the new plan. Now, a moment ago, I mentioned bringing the diesel engine and putting it into the starboard hull. The reason we're going to do that way out of order is uh, all to do with the space we have on the lot. And so once we get these two canoes over and in position, we're going to go out of order. We're going to build the motor mounts into the hull that's sitting here right side up. And that way we're ready for the diesel and we can bring it in here down the center of the holes with our bobcat and use the bobcat to drop that diesel engine here. That thing weighs about 700 pounds, so we need a uh, machinery to move that thing. And the problem is, is once we put these holes here and start putting the bulkheads across, we can no longer bring the bobcat down the middle and there's no room on the sides. So the only way to get the engine in here is to put it in there before we put the bulkheads across. And so, got to do it that way. So everything has to go in a specific order be just because of the space that we have. But we've worked it all out and it'll all work. It's just, we just got to do things in the right order. So that diesel is going to be in here before the, all the bulkheads that go across between the two holes are permanently put in. Now we'll probably put a couple in just to help us get these two canoes positioned properly uh, so that once that engine's in here, we don't have to move it again, the whole canoe with the engine in and all that weight. But if it was off later by a couple inches, well, we can always move the porthole a little bit to make it right. So it's not a big deal there. But we do have to get that diesel in here before the bulkheads. It's time to do our fourth layer, which is just going to be some patching. So we're going to start out with by wiping down the hole with some alcohol. And then we'll get some epoxy and start putting on those patches. Thursday morning, the brother's here. I'm going to strip some peel ply off of the cradles. back before I get punched in the face. <laughs> Won't be a first time. Yeah. Might not be the last. All right, we've got our second shelf in now. Just need to put a cove, top, right and left, and glass it in. Finishing up our cove edge, the inside of the cradle. We'll give that a little time to cure before we put the fiberglass layer over the top. All right, I'm busy sanding all of these spots we patched up. And what I'm discovering is that there'll be another round of this because uh, some of the places we filled just needs a little bit more. 
I'm not sure if it's because of the uh, board that I used to apply it wasn't quite as curvy as the flexi sander one was. So it seems like a few of these are still low uh, when I sand. So um, round two of that will take place uh, tomorrow. So today we're, gonna, we're sanding. I'm all the way up the hole to here, which is about a third to go on this side. Then I could go down the other side. So uh, I'll sand on this all day today and uh, get to putting more fairing compound on tomorrow. Meanwhile, while I'm doing that, Brian right there is working on the uh, forward cradle. And uh, right now he's getting the layers of uh, fiberglass on the inside and outside of it to strengthen it up. And as you can see further up forward, there's the one we already did and that one's complete. Uh, he's working on that all day today and he'll get that one done. And meanwhile, I'm over here with the flexi sander and uh, going to get back to that. We'll mask for some dust. I'm taking a brief rest from sanding, um, more for the sander than myself. We like to let that thing cool off every so often. Fairly warm, it's, um, it's actually high 80, so the epoxy's fine that Brian's doing in that kind of temperature. But that sander does get hot, so I take a break. We don't want to waste time, so uh, when I take a break here, I do business that we need to get done. And today I got word that our Nanny Diesel is shipping from the East Coast and it will go out today or maybe Monday, but one of the two. And that means in about a week, we're gonna get our diesel. And the reason that we need our diesel, obviously it's a long time before we need that, uh, that engine, but what we do need it for is it's a sequence of things. Since it has to go into the um, starboard hull before we can put the various bridge decks across or build the cabin top or build the bridge deck underneath the boat, any of that stuff, that diesel has got to get into the hull because we need the space to bring the bobcat in to put it in. So it has to go in early. And I didn't want to wait to the last minute to get that diesel because if there was some kind of delay, we would be completely held up by that since we couldn't do any of those other things until it was in. So I've got it coming and it's a little early now because we've still got to build the starboard canoe that it goes into and that's going to take us about eight weeks. So you know, a couple months from now, we're gonna need that diesel, but I just didn't wanna to wait to the last minute. And so now I know it's coming, we'll just store it for a couple months and we'll be uh, not held up waiting for it. And then the other thing I got ordered today is our Total Boat, which is one of our sponsors, uh, and uh, they give us a nice discount. So we got our Total Boat Barrier Coat Epoxy Primer that we're gonna be putting onto this uh, port canoe next week. And as soon as we get the fairing part done, and it's getting pretty far along now, I still think there's a couple more uh, short rounds to go. So we might not get to painting it till more like maybe Wednesday or Friday. But we need that paint here so that we can do that job. Because we want to put multiple layers of that barrier coat on before we flip the hull. Now, the reason we're doing multiple layers is that the best way to do that is to put it on when it's still tacky between coats and then you don't have to sand. But there, we're only going to put all but the last layer on and that way when we get to do the bottom paint and we'll, uh, it'll have its own primer but before we put that on we'll do one 80 grit sanding of, of the uh, total boat uh, barrier coat and then we'll put that la one more coat of it on, wait for it to be tacky again and then start with our uh, primer for the uh, bottom paint. 
and so and then the bottom paint of course so we're going to get that all done soon and uh we needed that primer so i got that ordered and now uh i waited long enough for that sander to cool down so back to sanding spot there. Saturday morning and we did the sanding on the far side here of the canoe but I've got to sand this side today so that we can get to the next round of doing our fairing on Monday. Meanwhile over there in the background you'll see the cradle which is what Brian's going to continue working on. We've got some uh, additional work over there to put in the, the top board that we have to glass in. So he's going to get to that. I'm going to get some, some sanding and we'll get this done today. So I'm going to let Brian take over. I did the first part of the bow there and he's going to take over sanding on this side of the hull while I move over to the other side at the stern and start doing some patching. All right, I'm going to fix up some of these low spots. So I went ahead and spread out all of that I had in the bucket out over various spots I have to fix, and now I'll just go do all the scraping. All right, well, that's what we've gotten done this week at the Lot Hucks I mentioned before we started. <laughs> a lot of fairing and sanding and fairing and sanding, but uh, it's still making good progress, so we're happy with that. So now let's talk about phase two, which is four months from now through December. Right, so phase one was the first four months, phase two, the next four months. And the first item of our list is sort of finishing up some things <laughs> we didn't accomplish in phase one. So right now we're still fairing the port hull and building the cradles for it. And that's about two weeks, but we're mostly through already, just so you know. And next we have add barrier coat to the port canoe, which we estimate two days. Yeah, it's um, we actually have to do it all in one day because we have to put all those layers down wet, basically tacky, not wet, but uh, that means we have to paint very solid for an entire day, but we do have some prep work we'll do the day before, so we're gonna call that two days. And then that's it for the port canoe finally. And so we're gonna bring the bobcat in and we're gonna flip that thing over onto the cradles we built and get it out of the way onto its permanent uh, cement pads that we built way back at the beginning of phase one. And that flipping of the port canoe really isn't gonna take more than that one day. We'll bring the bobcat in, flip it over. Okay. Build the starboard canoe and cradles 
which we estimate at seven weeks. Yeah, you've seen uh, all the different steps in building the port canoe, and this is going to be a repeat of all that. The yeah. only difference is we uh, know a lot more about what we're doing this time, and there's a whole host of mistakes <laughs> that we made on the first one. Nothing permanent, and there's a train coming through, so let's pause for a second. All right, as I was saying, there are um, a lot of things that we learned on doing the first one. None of the mistakes we made affected the hull at all. They were just about efficiency mistakes where we could be far more efficient. We're gonna show you all the ways that we're gonna be more efficient when we do that canoe, but it's gonna still take us about seven weeks to complete. At that point, uh, we're gonna go back over to the port canoe because when I said it was finished, I only really meant the outside because we're gonna have to prep the inside. That means to grind off all the excess, fill any uh, gaps or anything. And then we're gonna put a layer of basalt on the inside of that hull as well. And so that'll take us about a week to put that one layer of basalt and get it ready and put it in. Then once we finish that starboard canoe, we will have to flip it and seal the foam edge, which again is one day. Right, and what that sealing the foam edge is about is not in the plans. That's something we added. And that's purely due to the fact that we're building this boat outdoors and we are headed for the rainy season. Now, normally the rainy season in California is nothing. We get very, very, very little rain, except that this year, the year we're building our boat, <laughs> instead of eight years of drought that we've had for the last eight years, they're expecting a very heavy rainy winter. So, what we're gonna do is uh, take some care, and most of the, of the whole pieces are all sealed with um, vacuum bagged layers of fiberglass on them already. It's just the edges of the foam that are exposed. So the top edge of those canoes, we're going to go ahead and put a very thin layer of thickened epoxy on those top edges. We'll, we'll take out just a couple millimeters of foam and put that on. It doesn't matter because we're gonna eventually be bonding that with uh, epoxy anyway to another panel. But we're just gonna kind of seal that top edge and that'll make sure if it does rain, we don't have any problems with that. All right, so after we get that uh, starboard canoe uh, finished up, uh, then, of course, we have to do the inside of it, just like we did the inside of the port canoe. So we'll have to sand it, patch it, and put a layer of basalt on. So that's another week. Okay. Then we're going to temporarily place two bulkheads to align the canoes, which is just one day. And the reason they're only temporary, now normally at this stage in the build, you would put all the bulkheads in and tab them in and that'd be in. But because of the lot size that we have being limited, there's only one way for us to get the diesel engine and that's to come down the center of the holes with our Bobcat forklift. And that means there can't be any bulkheads in the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what we need to do is align those canoes. And so we'll put a couple of bulkheads in temporarily to get the canoes aligned, take them back off again, bring the engine down, put it in, get the Bobcat out of there. And now we can go ahead and uh, drop in all those bulkheads. And speaking of the engine, we're going to build that engine compartment in the starboard canoe, which we estimate at one week. Right. So instead of doing those bulkheads, we're going to build those, uh, basically the engine mounts, that whole engine compartment, so that we can do our next thing, which is lower the diesel engine to those mounts, and that'll just take one day with the Bobcat. Yep. Then we're going to seal the top edges and tab in all the bulkheads that cross between the hulls, and that'll be one week. Right, and it's that same thing when she's saying seals, that the very top edge of those bulkheads is still going to be exposed until we get the cabin roof on, which won't be for a while. And so just in case it rains, we're going to seal those top edges so that it won't matter at that point. All right, so uh, we've got all the bulkheads in, but bulkhead number six, as we termed her, <laughs> Big Bertha, was just too big and heavy to pre-make together into one piece. And also, uh, as I showed you before, there's a tiny little piece that goes across the top between them, and it would be too much stress on that as lifting it into the boat. So we decided to put that particular bulkhead together in the boat. And so we have to finish laminating it and putting in uh, a little bit of rope, so that'll take about two days. Uh, another pause because we got now a massive airplane noise going across <laughs> the top. Don't they know we're filming? Apparently not. Okay. Okay. Then we're going to tab in the remaining bulkheads in each canoe, which is going to be about three days. Right. There are eight bulkheads, but it's really just some uh, tabs along the bottom edges of them and such. So we figure that we can 
do a couple of those per day basically and get that done in that amount of time. Uh, once we've got those tabbed in, we're not done tabbing. Nope. <laughs> Next thing we're gonna do is tab in the, uh, the web into the canoe. The web are little cross pieces that go all along the bilge up and down the canoes. And so we're gonna tab all those in and uh, we're gonna figure that's a couple days per canoe, so four days total. Not done tabbing yet. We're no. gonna tab the foredeck web and that's another two days. Yeah, right in front of the salon there is another web which is the front deck and now our dog's barking so the noises just keep on coming so anyway we'll, we'll tab in that the web for the fore deck at that point yeah and finally we're going to tab in the long hull sides and decks which is two weeks right these are very big pieces which we've already seen together with their viscous they're already completely ready to go all we have to do is set them on top of the deck and then tab in the edges and stuff. So uh, I don't want to make light of that because uh, that's a lot of tabbing because just the length of the thing, 50 feet long. But still, two weeks should be plenty of time to get those um, hull sides and decks tabbed in. And remember that we're not tabbing in all of the hull sides either. The two largest panels that go down the outside of the boat get put on way down the line. And so we're just doing the top edges, the, the deck and the top edges of the hull, and that's all we really have to get to right now. That big side that goes on, we want that open so that dust from sanding and all that stuff can have access and we can have fan air going in. Yeah. So it's just a lot nicer to put those big side pieces on much later. Later, yeah. So and, all of that brings us to about 17 weeks which will take us uh, to being done around mid-December. Right, remembering that, that we've already done a couple weeks of this already uh, before this video. So uh, mid-December is uh, our goal and that should have our holes and bulkheads and uh, decks and everything on. Uh, so if we're getting rain during this period it really won't be a, a big problem. So uh, we're not too concerned about that. And uh, in phase three, we're not going to get into the details of that, but we'll get the cabin top done and the big bridge deck piece that goes underneath and the floors in and all that good stuff. So we'll get to the details of that mm -hmm. in December when we go over how we did in phase two. Yep. So thank you all for watching this week's video. We appreciate you uh, slogging through the endless amounts of uh, <laughs> fairing and sanding. Um, not quite done yet. We still got a couple more layers that we're still doing on that, but it's getting close. It's getting really nice. Yeah. And uh, so we'll be Oh, I should also thank our patrons. Uh, we always appreciate them. A couple new ones this week again. So uh, slowly our patron crew is, is building and all of their names will be soon be uh, engraved into the top of the table. We do have a little bit of sad news. One of our crew, Kathy Blood, who was there the day we unloaded the entire kit helping us uh, get the, the, the kit onto the lot. And... Um, someone who we really look forward to having along on the trip with us, has unfortunately had cancer and just passed away. And I can't tell you how sad we are about missing Kathy. But Kathy's name will be the first one engraved into the table of the salon. And so she can be with us in spirit as we go on this voyage around the world. And uh, we'll miss her terribly. We love and thank Kathy so much. Yeah. It's a sad thing, Cancer. I, I, I just wish the world would come up with a cure for that. They're working on it. they got to work faster. Absolutely. Okay, well, that's it for this week. Okay. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified of our next video. Right, and so uh, next week we hope to finish up the very, very last of the fairing and... Uh, you know, if possible, get that paint on there, uh, seven layers of uh, barrier coat, and then we're going to flip that hull over if we get to it. Oh, I'm hoping so. We'll see how long the painting takes us. Uh, it's quite a bit of work. But uh, we'll see you next week for that. Bye. Bye.